friends, and welcome to my channel for part nine of the explanation of the Mendelssohn first movement of Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. This is the last last section, and this is when it gets really exciting. Um, we're starting in this discussion in bar 460, and we'll go to the end of the movement. Now, there's various ways. I, you know, we've got we've got this Boeing mark in 462 where there's a double down. I, I don't like that particularly. This because it denies the you know Mendelssohn's half note on the first on the first note of the measure is a half note, and if you're going to do a double down, you're going to necessarily have to shorten that F sharp. So you're playing. See, it's like a quarter note. It's not a bad effect having the two downs, but I just think you're trading off. You're either making it a shorter note, and Mendelssohn knew, he knew how to write a quarter note. He said a half note. So my solution is to play, I do up, down, up, instead of up, up. You still get an accent on the, on the D-sharp down bow. So, you have to choose for yourself there. That's an artistic decision on your part. You want to make a quarter note F sharp with the rest, and then same thing on the second, second. I do. I, I start up bow. Again, now here's a tradition in 70, 71, to, in 72, to make a little pullback. Just a little tiny bit. We could go in tempo because you'd say, well, you know, we're, we're working at 92 and we're going to go pew presto more, more fast, more faster, presto, you know, meaning here fast. But there's always this little bit of a resistance, tension. <laughs> then, you know, you don't actually have to go quite so fast in this pew presto. And it, it still feels like, oh, we're starting to, you know, you, everybody, the whole audience, everybody can feel, oh, the end is coming. This is really getting stirred up. So we're going along here with the accents. Oh, over the, yeah, play it over to the G string. It's a nice effect, okay? So how do I do that? Oh, get to the fourth position and then. The sempre, sempre means always more fast. I've always loved this. I've always loved this section. It's so it's so exciting. And back in the old days, it used to be a tradition on these last to play the fingered octaves like I did. I I don't hear many of the younger younger great great players. I mean, they obviously can do it. They just don't feel it. They don't feel they need it. But I, you know, they just play. It's all right, you know. But if you want to try the fingered octaves, you can do that. One three, one three two. Three, uh, two, four, one, three, and uh, you can check. I just did a video about fingered octaves, how to develop your skills in fingered octaves. So, and then, so we can do that. Now we hit the presto. I take, I, I don't, you know, presto, you know, for presto favace, it's basically as fast as you can, and fast as you're comfortable, and as fast as you can control it. My tempo I hear here is 138. I, I didn't check the tempo before I, I played it. I just recorded it. So I'm assuming it's in that range of 138. I'm sure there are players that can play it faster. Um, I'd say make sure you get the honor the accents, the sforzandos in the second half of fourth ninety-three. That's, that's very typical of, of Mendelssohn. Make sure you he, get those accents. Find good fingerings for yourself through here. I come down here in uh, 500. I go into a half position. Go and then get up to third. Not a big deal. A little confusing in, in the music. They have these extra accents in three, four, five. In 505, we've got the, they, in the music, if I play slow, And that's as far as they go. It's nonsense. Who, who's got time? Who's got time? I say put the accents on the on the downbeat. 
and keep the accents going on the downbeat all the way through this passage. So forget just forget these extra accents. Um, there's some various different possible fingerings here. The one I prefer in starting at 508. Go to third position. Go to fourth position right there. Because that sets you up for the B. And then up to the fourth on the G. And you can play harmonic or you can play solid at the end. But that's, we're looking for something, you know, maybe we're a little fatigued by this point, and you want something very, very solid that you can really rely on, that you don't have to think too much. It's very clean shifts. Okay, and then you get a, you get a momentary break as the orchestra finishes the movement with the long, and then we come to the long bassoon note, and we're off into the second movement segue without a, without a break. All right, so that wraps up the first movement of the Mendelssohn, and I hope you enjoyed the whole series of nine, nine discussions, and, and hopefully it's helpful, helpful for you to enjoy. It's always about your enjoyment of playing better and understanding the piece better and getting some takes, and um, if, you have any, if you have any questions of something I didn't cover, put them in the comments. All right, thanks so much for listening. Give it a like if you liked it. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. And we'll see you on the next video. Is that right? I'm still, I'm still, I'm still looking to to do a video about tense. That's that's another one that's coming up. That's a very interesting, yeah, you know, very advanced techniques. But there's a lot of different ways to approach them to protect your hand because you know we got to really open up our hand to get get open, you know, get those tense. All right. So we'll see you on the next video, whatever it might be. Take care.